Hi everyone, it's Kino McGregor. Welcome to the Kino Yoga Show on Miami TV Live. Thanks so much for joining. Today's show is actually going to pick up on a viewer's question from last week. So thanks for watching. And if you're watching right now, remember to follow me on Twitter and tweet your questions to me at Kino McGregor on Twitter so that I can address what you're interested in too. So last week's viewer question was about yoga for stiff people. So basically the question comes from a viewer who says, hey, I'm not flexible like you, but I'd really like to do yoga yoga, is there any hope for me? So first of all, there's totally hope for you. You don't need to be flexible. You don't need to be young and super supple when you start the practice. What's important to know is that every movement, no matter how advanced and how cool it looks, so last week I was demonstrating headstand, and if that looks really intimidating for you, every movement, you have to remember that every movement can be broken down into a more fundamental or easy posture. So the most basic tool of yoga is the coordination of breath with movement. And you can coordinate your breath with any movement. You don't need it to be a very flexible movement. You don't even need to go really deeply into the joints in order to get that benefit of coordinating your breath with your movement. So we're going to take that tool today and focus on some basic, easy stretches that will lead you up to the most fundamental and healing practice in the whole yoga tradition, which is the sun salutations. Now the sun salutations will ignite that inner fire of purification. So if you're feeling kind of stiff, well, what's going to make you more flexible? Turning on that fire inside of the body is going to bring circulation into the joints and it'll detoxify your body from the inside out. So it's really important when you're thinking about practicing that you remember you don't need to be flexible and young or have any particular shape to do the practice. All you need to do is give it a try and keep an open mind so you're able to modify the postures to the level that you're at. So we have two viewer questions um, specifically to answer before we get started in that yoga for stiff people routine. Now the first viewer question came from watching the routine that we did last week. Now the question was, is she, which is me, is she, am I really this ripped from doing yoga? First of all, thanks so much for saying that I'm ripped. I never really thought of myself as someone with like strong muscles because, you know, I'm a yoga person. So I'm more, I, it's not that I'm not interested in the way the muscles look, but I'm constantly thinking about what they can do for me. So I've never really, you know, I'm not really looking at the muscles that way, but it's really nice to know that someone else thinks that. And I don't really do anything else other than Ashtanga yoga. Since I was 22 years old, I've been practicing Ashtanga yoga six days a week and I rarely miss a day. I think probably the biggest gift that I bring to the practice is a natural sense of discipline and this natural sense of discipline is where I've gotten all of the tone in my muscles and all of the flexibility really in my joints. When I started the practice, I couldn't lift my butt off the ground. I was a complete weakling. I had no shoulders. Actually, now that I think about it, when I came back from India after practicing for a while, my dad actually said something something to me about my shoulders. He said something like, wow, I'm really glad you decided to do yoga because your shoulders are really filled out. They were a little droopy before and I just felt like, well, thanks dad for calling my shoulders droopy. But um, he did actually say they got better. So I can really, you know, can really thank the Ashtanga yoga practice. So there's many different styles of yoga. The Ashtanga yoga practice is pretty challenging and requires you to lift your body off the ground so you can de develop all of that deep core strength and all that upper body strength that's really transformed my body. So yes, all of the muscles that you can see on my body are solely from the Ashtanga yoga practice, which means if you practice, you can develop them too because I didn't have them when I started. So another question, that comes in that actually that came in last week that I actually get from a lot of people um, is was Kino ever a gymnast? You were, you know, you can do that because you were a gymnast or you were a dancer or something like that. I actually had an argument with someone who didn't believe me, or didn't believe my answer to the question. So first of all, I was never a gymnast. I was never a dancer. I was never anything physical. I was never even on a sports team. I don't think I've ever kicked a soccer ball in my entire life. What I was doing before yoga was occasionally going to the gym and riding the exercise bicycle and maybe walking on the treadmill. And then after that, um, I was primarily an academic. So the only real thing that I was doing outside of yoga was just academics. I was reading and I was studying in school. So when I came to the practice of yoga, it was a totally different thing. And it was probably the thing that I had have been the worst at in my entire life 
because um, I was pretty, I mean, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I you know, was definitely naturally better at academics than I was at yoga. I was pretty terrible at it. So I couldn't even imagine the kind of skill that it takes to really be a gymnast. I definitely don't have that. I never had that. When I think about like walking on a balancing beam, I get a little bit scared. I wouldn't even know what to do on those, like what are they called, the parallel bars? I don't even think I could lift myself up from that. I've never even tried. I've never even been in a gymnastics gym. So I've never been a dancer, I've never been a gymnast, I've never been anything like that. So essentially what that means is, hey, there's hope for all you non-dancer, non-gymnast, totally body discoordinated people out there. I've been practicing with some people who, um, you know, they were trying to teach me a movement and actually said that I was such a slow learner. So they were wondering if there was some, you know, some, some problem with my brain, if I was a little dumb in the body. So if you feel like that too, you know, like discoordinated, like a little bit body dumb, I'm right there with you. And again, there's hope for me. There's hope for you too. Whatever I can do, you can do too if you're patient and you practice. And what's important is, you know, don't expect your body to change like poof, magic pixie dust overnight. What you want to do is commit yourself to the slow, steady discipline of the practice and look for progress over a year. Look for progress over two years. And perhaps most importantly, look for progress over the whole lifetime that you commit yourself to the practice of yoga. Okay, well, I hope that will give you some hope along the journey, especially for those stiff people who are watching. We're gonna do this yoga for stiff people routine with me. I'm gonna build you up and to show you what can happen as if, if you commit to these little step-by-step -step movements. And remember, we're gonna coordinate our breath with our movement to start off. So, a comfortable seated position. Now, since we're doing this for stiff people, if you are not comfortable on the floor, please sit in a chair. So you can actually grab a chair and just sit with your knees together out in front and your hands right on your knees if you're sitting on a chair. If you're sitting on the floor, a comfortable cross-legged position to start off. Then, I'd like you to place your hands on your knees and we'll begin to coordinate our breath with our movement. So first we need to breathe and be able to control that breath. So we'll suck in the belly and engage the pelvic floor so you're gonna make contact with the pelvis. Right? So the first step to opening the body is really to feel the body. So mm, maybe get down there in your pelvis and kind of make friends with it and say, oh, what's going on down there? Make contact with the pelvis, suck the belly in, and now breathe with consciousness. So inhale, saying the sound sa to yourself as you inhale, and saying the sound ha to yourself as you exhale. Lips sealed, gaze at the tip of the nose or outward in front of you. Let your neck be in a nice neutral position, and again, sa as you inhale. Here we go, inhale. Keep inhaling, keep saying that sound saw to yourself. Let the back of the throat open. Exhale, ha. And again, inhale. Let the breath fill your whole lungs and let your body raise up when you inhale. And then exhale. Steady exhalation. You want it to sound like the tide. Inhale. Deep, resonant breath, raising saw as you inhale. Follow my hand and keep inhaling, inhaling. And then exhale. Like the sound of the tide. Maybe it sounds a little bit like Darth Vader too. So if you've ever seen Star Wars, you know exactly how to breathe. One more time. Inhale. Close the lips and saw as you inhale, resonant breath, feel it in the lungs, feel it through your throat, reach the apex of your inhalation, and again, coordinate your attention to your breath, exhale. Long, steady exhalation, ha as you exhale, and on this exhalation, move your hands easy into the prayer position, okay? From here, we'll now practice raising the hands above our head while coordinating that with our breaths, all right? So from the prayer position, inhale, raise your hands above the head, straightening the elbows, looking up. And then exhale, flow through the center line, the head drops back down and back into prayer. So that's nice and easy. And again, you can do it in any posture from you're seated in the chair, you're seated on the floor. We'll continue. Shoulder blades roll first down the back and then spiral forward and around. Inhale, slowly. Hands raise above the head, straightening the elbows. Tip your head gently back and gaze down the bridge of the nose, forward and towards your thumbs and reach for the ceiling with your fingers. And then exhale, roll 
pull the arms gently, easily back down. Let's do that one more time. Long, steady flow of inhalation as you raise the arms above the head, gazing right at the thumbs. And then nice and easy and exhale. Follow the center line all the way down. And let your hands just gently drop down. We'll just pause for a moment. So you don't need any particular stretch to do yoga. Yoga is the stretch. All you need to do is start and that easy coordination of your breath with your movement will get you flowing in the, in the postures. You don't need to do any extra stretching. Yoga, again, is the total movement transformation program for the whole body and mind. So let's actually add some coordination of the breath with the movement of our whole torso. So in this movement, we're actually gonna be folding forward. So if you're in the chair and you're doing this, just fold your torso right onto your thighs. So here we go. Having the hands in prayer, keep that deep resonant breath. So you're breathing with sound so you can hear yourself breathing so you know whether you're inhaling or exhaling. Okay, so here we go, inhale. Nice, long, steady inhalation. Raise the arms above your head, reach, reach high. And this time, exhale, bend right from the hip joints. Take your hands on the floor, open it up, and slowly drop your head down, and then slowly reach forward as much as you can, and eventually you'll flatten yourself to the ground, but just let yourself fold as much as possible for now. And then gently inhale, pivot through the hip joints, raise the hands above your head, and then exhale back through the center line of the body, and then we'll do it again. Keep your hands right at the center of your chest, and inhale, raise the hands, coordinate your breath with the movement, let the breath float the arms, and then exhale, your pubic bone is dropping back while your tailbone remains heavy, hands to the floor, and then drop into the hip joints, nice, slow, and steady. And eventually, remember, you're gonna be flat on the ground, but for now, just go down as far as you can can, maybe even just to there. And then inhale, arms, reach it nice and high, easy coordinating the breath with the movement, and then exhale, bend the elbows, follow the center line of the body, and back down. Now let's see if we can do that and lean to the side. So when we lean to the side, we start to enlist all of the movements in the abdominal muscles, and the abdominal muscles actually store a lot of tension. Most people are really focused on like getting that six pack abs and strong abdominal muscles, but if you focus too much on that without releasing your abdominal muscles, you'll kind of store tension and around all the organs, and organs that are too tense are also unhealthy. So when we do any lateral stretches or lean to the side, or any twisting inside of the torso, we get more and more flexible and more and more happy, you could say, deep down in our stomach and in our torso. So let's, we're gonna lean over to the side on the next one, all right? So here we go, hands in prayer, coordinating the breath with the movement. This is again a nice, easy thing that anyone can do. Inhale, raise the hands above your head, reach it nice and high, and then exhale, just lean a little over to the right side and keep gazing right at the thumbs or right at the base of your wrist. And you'll notice from here, you wanna feel your torso lifting up and you just lean a little over to the side. For those of you sitting in the chair, make sure both of your sitting bones remain real heavy and pressed into the ground. And then inhale, let's come all the way back to the center. Should we go right for the other side? I think you could do it. Inhale, raise the hands, keep them up. And then exhale, pivot over to the left side, reach over over and over and switch your gaze and reach high out through the fingertips. Let the movement come from deep inside the abdomen, the arms as straight as possible, and then inhale back up to the center and flow through the center line all the way down. Good. So you might have felt, and I definitely did some movement through the shoulders, like some activation in the shoulder girdle. Don't be afraid of activation, particularly if you're stiff, when your muscles need to get more flexible, you'll feel like burning sensations inside of the muscles, just like you would feel if you were doing strengthening exercises. Those burning sensations are going to break through the obstacles in the muscle tissues and actually create more flexibility. And the soreness that you feel, and you should be sore if you're a little stiff after yoga, 24 to 48 hours after will actually make you more flexible and more strong, okay? So with this in mind, I think we're, we're ready to actually begin to go onto our hands and knees.